Hey, everybody. So, Alyssa, once again, um, this is going to be interesting. Uh, a lot of you, surprising number of people, asked me to do a video on makeup. And so, first of all, disclaimer. I am not a makeup artist. I am not an expert. I don't know anything other than what I've learned from other people, what I've watched on YouTube and that kind of stuff and whatever, right? I mean, things that my, my mom and my sister have taught me, whatever. So I am not the expert. So anything and everything you see may or may not be the right way to do it. I'm just going to show you the way I do it. Um, so, you know, fair disclaimer, if you follow what I do and your skin falls off or something, Hey, I'm sorry, I'm telling you now, none of this is tried and true. I am not an expert in any way. Um, other than that, you know, I, I guess I'll get started. Just, you know, my goal most of the time when I'm doing makeup is to try to keep it as natural as possible. And when I say that, I don't mean like you hear people and the, the big joke about the no makeup look takes like a ton of makeup to make the no makeup look. Yeah, I mean... My goal is to enhance, um, you know, just kind of make things smoother, nicer, lined better, all that sort of thing, right? To enhance the look, but without it looking like I'm really super made up. And I think that's, from what I understand, that's what people have been really liking about what I do. And that's why they wanted to see this. So I'm going to show you that. Um, let me get started. First of all, one of the most important things, and I did it about 15 minutes ago, which is when I recommend you do it is before you're ever going to start your makeup, you, moisturizer is actually super important because especially when it comes to like your foundations and your powders, they do take a lot better to your face if you've moisturized first and you know your, your pores have kind of, everything's kind of puffed up a little bit and pores have closed off a little bit, they've gotten smaller. Makeup goes on a lot easier and it looks a lot better. Now, what you don't want to do is use like a really heavy duty, really thick, creamy moisturizer because that's actually going to cause more problems. It's going to make your skin feel thicker and then makeup doesn't go on well. So now I, I should also say none of this is sponsored, right? Like I don't do this for a living. I don't normally do videos like this. This is not my thing. So... You know, no sponsors, but I will mention brand names just so you guys can go find this up. So from a moisturizer perspective, this is what I really like. It's the Neutrogena Hydra Boost. And what I like about it is it's really thin. It's a lot of water content and um, hyaluronic acid. And that's it. So it's really super thin. But you want to put it on, like I said, about 15 minutes before. Because when you put it on, it is... It, you want it to dry. I mean, basically, you want it to really soak in well, get into your skin, dry, so that when you go to put your makeup on, you know, hey, um, you know, it, you're not putting on wet skin, obviously. So, next thing, brushes. Here's my whole collection of brushes, and you can see it's kind of a mismatch. A uh, bunch of them are just, there's nothing special in there. Honestly, I just, I buy, like, kits off Amazon. I literally... Um, there's like two brushes in one brush actually only that you're going to see today that is like anything that I bought specific because of like brand or whatever else. Um, and so that's where I'm going to actually, before, well actually before that, I'm going to do one final word. I'm going to do like kind of the, the full blown makeup. Like I'm going to do everything. Most days I don't wear this much makeup. I don't do like full on eyeshadows and all the stuff like I'm the kind of girl, most of the times I get up and it's eyeliner, mascara, and I'm out the door. Uh, maybe makeup, uh, maybe lipstick, but even that I don't do most of the time because we're wearing face masks right now. But, so I'm going to do the full-blown thing. And when I'm going to do, like, really full-blown, I do start with a little bit of a primer. And so this is the Urban Decay Optical Illusion, as hopefully you can see. Um, but I don't use a lot of it. I just use it on my cheeks where I have some acne scarring, and it's just, it, it kind of helps fill in so you're gonna see I don't use an awful lot like I'm gonna take that much just that little drop and that's all I'm gonna use this goes on really really thick so I do tend to you know smush it between my fingers first and just really 
gently kind of rub it in because you don't want to... One of those kind of rules for doing makeup is you don't want to be stretching your skin an awful lot. Um, you know, especially when you start to get older like me and you start to realize that all those years of like stretching your skin like that causes wrinkles to show up faster and I have plenty of them as it is. I don't want to create more. So, um, but yeah, I just, you know, a little bit on the cheeks and that's just because I have a lot of acne scarring there from when I was younger and I try to fill that in. I don't do an awful lot. Um, I just, it's, I don't, I don't really need it and the less I have to put on my face, the better. So foundation now. Um, I will do foundation today. Again, most days I don't. I'm fortunate my skin's pretty clear. I don't typically need it. There's a few places you can see my nose has some discoloration. I like to have it. Um, but I'll do full face today. Um, what I actually use is the, this is IT Cosmetics or IT Cosmetics. I don't know. I've heard it said both ways. Um, it's just their CC cream or CC plus cream. And it, what I like is it goes on really thin. It's decent coverage. It's not like super full coverage. But it goes on thin, and I try to use it really thin. I don't use a lot of foundation. Um, I also sometimes will use uh, Urban Decay. This is, I think they're all nighter. Yeah. Um, that goes on a little heavier, but I still try to keep it really thin with foundation. Um, and the goal of the foundation is, yeah, it's, it's to kind of cover if you've got some blemishes you're trying to hide. But mostly it's just to kind of give like a flat look and give... A little bit more for the rest of the makeup to hold on to. So you're going to see here, I don't use an awful lot. So that little dot's going to do most of my face. I'll probably have to do a little bit more. But I'm just going to dab it on in a few spots. And then it's really just tapping it in. And all I'm trying to do is get a good even look. I'm not trying to cake this on. I'm not using it. If I had like a zit or something, which I'm fortunate enough today, I don't. Um... You know, I would be probably using a little bit of concealer before I did this. Um, today, skin's actually doing pretty well. Nothing I'm trying to hide. So, you know, I, I won't even do any concealer. I'm just going to do... I'm just going to do the foundation right away. And again, I'm just, you know, tapping it. Not doing a lot of, like, wiping. Because I don't really want to stretch the skin on my face. I want to... You know, and you get a more... When you're doing like this stippled look like this, I guess that's what we would call it if we were painters, um, you know, it it gives it a smoother look overall. So things just kind of, you, you don't get streaks and things, and especially on my nose where I've got some sun damage and it's a little harder skin, it, it'll it definitely streak if I just start wiping it. Um, so I'm going to add just a little bit more just to do kind of my, my forehead area. Um, and I'm also going to get above my eyelids. But I don't actually put much down onto my eyelids because, again, the, the weight and the thinnest skin on your face is in your eyelids. And the more you add to them, you know, the more, not only is it thin skin, but it flexes and it tends to then, this the makeup cracks and does weird things. So, you know, so there you go. It, it's fairly even. Next thing for me, always, always, always is setting powder. Um, I'm a big fan of setting powder. Um, I think it, it just, again, it, it makes it easier too if like you get other stuff that splashes or whatever. Um, it's easy to get it off, but it, it'll just, again, help with kind of that smoother skin look. So what I use is a loose powder. It's just a translucent. Again, this is from IT. Um, or it, or however, I don't know. Um, and I just use a little, uh, I mean, a, a fairly, I guess, liberal amount. Um, because this is the one thing, it, it doesn't add anything. And this is a good powder. I mean, you'll hear some people say, with powder, be careful because powder will make your wrinkles show up more. And yeah, I have found that with some powders, but it also usually happens more if you put on a ton of, um, of foundation. If you're, as I was, a little more judicious about how much foundation you put on, you can do a little more powder. Um, but the key with the powder is getting something that doesn't have an oil in it. Some of the oils that they put in the powders, yeah, it sounds counterintuitive. It really is. Why would you put oil in powders? 
um, it will tend to dry your face out. And so I like this stuff for my tea. It's really good. I never had any issues with it really drying me out. And so that's, you know, that's where I, I like to go. So it's uh, here, IT Bye Bye Pores. Um, hey, you know, I, I like it. Uh, so next, and this is where people are going to start to argue, like, you're doing it in the wrong order. You should save this for that or whatever. Just telling you this is what works for me. So you want to do it in a different order, be my guest. I don't care. I'm just showing you what works for me. Um, I'm going to do blush next. And I really like this palette. It's from Anastasia. And they've got a few different ones. But what I like is it's got the three colors. And I'm actually going to use all three. Because when we're doing cheeks, we're trying to add dimension, right? Or trying to, especially for me, I'm not gifted like really good, strong cheekbones. Um... So what I'm trying to do is just add dimension. I want to, on top, I wanted it to appear lighter, like the sun, or like, you know, the lighting is bouncing off of it. And underneath, I want it to be darker because that's where I'm trying to create the illusion of a shadow, more shadow than is actually there. And so what I'm going to do with this, because I got the three colors, is this one here is kind of going to be my, like, general in the middle. This is the top because you can see it's that, that, brighter shade and I've got this darker shade which does a really good job kind of creating the shadow underneath so I'm going to use all three but that's the way I'm going to use them and I'm hope I'm hopeful I'm holding things up high enough for you to see too but um again never done this before I'm not so great at it um but so we'll start with that middle I'll start with the middle and I just kind of you know I'll give a little bit of a smile so I can see where I want this to fall and I'm just very lightly putting this on you can see I'm not adding a ton of color either because, again, I'm going for like a very natural look. I don't want it to look like I put on four pounds of makeup. So now I'll, I'll, I'll go with the, the more highlighter color. This is for more of the top of the cheek. So you'll see I'll, I'll sit a little bit higher with this. Um, again, just brushing on really gently. And that's all it needs. Now you can see it's starting to add that dimension. And now when I go to this dark color, this is where you're really going to see that kind of start to come in. I'm going to keep this down underneath a little bit more. I'm going to do contour next. Um, so, I mean, I'm doing some contouring with this, but we'll do more. Some days, a lot of days, I don't do contour because I just do this. I, I use these three colors and you can see now how I've kind of got a little bit of that depth. And I'm going to come back later on. I'm going to add some highlighter, actual highlighter up there. Um, but a lot of days I don't do that either. I just go with this. Like this is, this is enough to really accentuate my cheeks a bit, make them look a little fuller, which is the whole point of blush. Blush is there to make your cheeks look fuller. That That's the whole point. Um, and also after you've done full foundation, it's good because it gives you your face a little color, which isn't a bad thing either. Um, so now I'm gonna switch brushes and I told you I was gonna do contour. Um, you can see this is well used. Again, none of this is sponsored, so all this stuff has been used a million times. I'm not showing you brand new palettes. Um, but this is the Urban Decay Naked Skin. You want to see how much I use this? This is what I'm using right now. You can see it's panning out because I use it all the time when I do contour, which I do sometimes. Um, but you can see that one that's panned out, that's the one I'm going to use because um, that's one of the best matches my skin tone. I don't want to go too dark. I don't want to create huge, dramatic shadows. Again, natural look, just trying to create enough. And what I'm doing here is I'm just getting, it's kind of this triangle area from where I stopped with the, the blush here and the bottom of my ear down to about here, you know, kind of towards that apex of my lips. And I'm just trying to add a little bit of shadow because that again is going to give a fuller, when I look at you straight on now, you can see how this darkens and it creates a little more fuller cheek. And that's all I'm trying to do. Again, it's just about illusion. I mean, that's that's what makeup's really about. You know, it's just kind of take what you got and make it look a little bit better, nicer, whatever. I don't know. Uh, you know, just kind of highlight or accentuate the things that you want people to see. Next thing, I got a really big, thick nose. So we're going to do a little bit on the nose as well. And this is, you can see it goes on really thick at first, if you notice that. Um, so I am going to blend it down. But yeah, I'm just, here it's just on the sides of the nose. And all I'm trying to do is, you know, create a little more shadow here so my nose just appears a little thinner. I'm not, you know, it, 
contour doesn't work wonders. It's not a miracle worker. It's just enough to kind of create the illusion of some extra shadowing or to enhance the shadows that are there to kind of draw a shape that you want. And you can see now I've got a little bit thinner. I'm not even going to do highlighter down the middle. Sometimes when people do contour, they, they'll do a highlighter as well. I don't think I need it. You know, really with just the shadow there, it looks good. And then I'm going to do the same just a little bit along my chin line. And that's just to give a little bit stronger look. So you can see just kind of underneath the chin, it gives my chin a little bit stronger appearance too. Um, slims it down a little bit too because I have a wide chin. I know that. I can admit it. It's not the end of the world. But it is something I like to take care of with makeup. So, And then just kind of reducing these and giving a little better line on the jawline here. So yeah, just very simple. Again, very light strokes. I'm not like rubbing this in really hard. Um, just enough to really sort of give that additional color and it kind of helps. So, so that's contour. That's all I do. Now other people will do more. They'll highlight in different areas and things. I try to keep it simple. Um, the less makeup I have to wear, the better, just to get the look I'm comfortable with. So... That's it as far as what I'm going to do there. Now it's time for eyes. And I'm going to check the chat real quick because I know people are talking. Um, cool, yeah. So no, no questions yet. Good. That means I'm explaining well. Um, I'm going to do... I'm going to actually take out a few palettes here. I'm a big fan of Anastasia Beverly Hills, so you're going to see a lot of that. Um... I've got a few of her different palettes. So this is the Norvina palette. I've also got the Modern Renaissance, and you can see these are dirty because they get used all the time. And the Soft Glam. Um, the reason I'm taking them out is I'm gonna use three shades on my eyes. Now I have really hooded eyes. And I mean, they're not as bad as some, but mine are, they're fairly hooded. And one of the great effects you may have seen online that works really well when you have hooded eyes is they call it a cut crease, where you're really trying to highlight and you're drawing a really, you're trying to highlight your eyelids and you're drawing a really hard line at the, the crease and then bringing shadow up from there. So I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do the poor girl's version because I'm not going to put a lot on my eyelids. I'm really just going to focus on the area above I might put some shimmer on, probably just to show you. Um, but so I'm going to use a three-step approach. So I'm going to use three different colors here. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab the one in here. It's called Tempura. You can see it up here. It's completely panned out because I use it a lot. And I'm actually going to use their brush because I really like this brush that they include, this the big fluffy side. And I'm just going to use that, and what I'm really going to do is I'm going to use that to highlight this area underneath my eyebrows. So when I do my eyebrows later, um, you know, I'll come back to that, and that, I, you know, you'll see, I actually think I'm going to add some color on that brush. I did. That was sloppy. So now, now you get to learn something else that's really great about makeup. The best way to be good at makeup, as far as I'm concerned, is to know how to fix your, your flubs. Um, so the fact that there was color on this br brush, I don't normally use it for the color, so I'm a little surprised by that. So we're just going to wipe that off quick, and now I'm going to try this again. In this case, I think I can get this light enough that it will just... Yeah, I'm going to... Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my foundation brush. Not putting any more foundation on it, but you can see I'm just going to kind of go back over that, and it'll put just enough in there to lighten that back up. All right, so I goofed up, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take a little bit of setting powder, just what's left on the brush, not add more. All right, back to good. Now it's the color I want. And now I'm going to put a little bit of this highlighter in there, so it's that, that tempura color, and I'm going to bring that down, but it's I'm going to bring it down. Partially, it, it helps highlight this area, but more importantly, what it's going to do is it's going to make it easier for me to blend the next color. And that's really what this is about. By getting this on here, now when I bring the next color in that you're going to see in a minute, it, it's going to make it easier for me to blend that out. So now I'm going to take, I've got this really cool angled brush. I love this one. This is like, this is where I'm all about when I'm talking eyeshadow. 
I love this brush. Um, you can see, here's the brand name, Shani. It, it, again, it's just a silly Amazon brand. I bought like a, I think like a pack of 40 brushes or something. I grab my favorite ones, they stay in here. The rest are, you know, locked or tucked away in a cabinet somewhere. Um, so now what I'm doing, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking in terms of I want to, I want to do like a gradual fade. So I'm going to use two colors that are complementary. Um, actually, I'm going to go now to the Norvina palette. And there's this, this love. And you see it's kind of a light, light pink. Um, I do really well with like plums and pinks. Those really match my skin tone well. So I'm going to start with that because it's the lightest color. And that's the one that's going to go up the highest. And I'm just going to get some of it on my brush. I'm going to tap my brush off. Um, if you don't do that with shadow, you can end up spreading way more color than you want. And the trick with shadow is put it on light and build it. Don't try to put it all on at once. Um, because that's when you get like the really dark, unless you're going for something really dramatic like that. But if you're trying to keep it more natural looking, you want to put it on lighter to begin with and then, you know, just build up the color. So I'm going to start here. And then you see I'm, I'm starting with my eye pretty well closed. I'm starting in the crease and I'm going to go the full width. And I'm just going to I start in the crease because that's where I want the bulk of the color. And I'm just going to slowly drag it up. And I'm just going back and forth and just trying to bring that color up till it almost gets up to, so it's just that little bit of space between where I spread the color and my eyebrow. So now you see with the hooded, how that works, right? That, that kind of raises that, that hood a little bit, makes it, it, it doesn't accentuate it as much now. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side and I actually got quite a bit of color in here, so I probably won't need to do more. But this is where setting powder comes in too, where I was using a lot of that setting powder. If you get too much color in one spot when you're doing this, you can really easily just keep going over it and you can really blend that out. Um, and so if you're not putting it, if you've got setting powder in between your foundation and you know, what you're doing with the shadow, it makes it all blend out a lot easier. Um, so, you know, where I got a lot, I'm going to just keep kind of pulling that over because, yeah, I did get quite a bit in that corner, a little bit more than I wanted. But, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to go back to the other side and just make it match now. Um, and that usually happens. Usually the first side, you don't get as much color because it's not as dense on the brush second eye you get more color and so then you kind of have to come back and at least I do I have to come back and clean that up so there we go so I've got the first color on or actually technically the second now the other color is I'm going to go with something a little darker and just put it into the crease and so this is where I'm going to create kind of that dramatic this is that kind of cut crease thing without doing like a real cut crease if I was going to do what they call what the true cut crease I'd be doing concealer on my eyelids and that sort of thing. I don't like that. I don't like all that heavy stuff on the thin skin on my eyelids that flexes an awful lot. So I'm going to grab just this small, you know, more of a color packing brush. Um, and I'm going to use more of like a dark red. So to go with that, I'm, I'm going to use this uh, Venetian red here, if you can see that, sorry. Um, because that'll, you know, with this pink, That'll give the next dimension of color, and I'm just going to blend them together. So you'll see how this works in a minute, but I'm going to take a little bit of Venetian Red. I'm going to actually try to prime my brush a little bit by putting a bunch on and then wiping it off on. I'm just wiping it off on some tissue. And then I'm just going to go in here, and I'm going to really lightly, starting in the corner, because that's where I want the bulk of the color, and then maybe about two-thirds of the way across my eye. And I'm just putting that in there just to add a little bit of dimension. You see, I'm not putting a lot in there. There's not a lot of color here. And I'm just blending that out. And so it adds just that little bit of dimension. If I want to blend it more, go back to the brush that I used for the previous color. And I can really just lightly go over that and blend it out. And it'll draw the two colors together nicely. Now I'm just going to do the same on the other eye. It's pretty simple. I'm just going to go back in there again. I'm just looking to get it into the crease 
And once it's into the crease, I'm going to blend it out and just take it up so that you know, I don't have these hard lines. Instead, I've got just a nice transition of color from the crease upward. And there we go. Now, I could stop here as far as eyeshadow. I'm going to do a little bit extra today because, well, you know, I'm here and I'm doing this. One of the things I like to do that gives just a hint of a flare, a little, a little more dramatics to it, is I'm going to take more of that, that neutral color, um, which I also have in this palette. It's called Tempura in this one. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to actually, I'm going to come under my eye, and you can see that's really bright at the moment, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blend that out. But you see what it does? It gives that really like nice line there. And again, with my hooded eyes and the fact that I have kind of a a, a weird, the, the way that, that the bone meets the rest of my cheekbone, this just creates kind of a, a little bit of a dramatic flare, almost like a cat eye, but without doing a cat eye. And so I, I like to do that sometimes just to really harden that line where the shadow ends and give sort of that cat eye effect without going through. I'm not going to do all that with eyeliner today. That's... Cat eye is a whole nother mess. And again, I'm trying to keep things a little more natural looking. So I've got this. Now I did the color a little bit heavier too because I want to show you this. Remember I said about, you know, really one of the keys is being able to fix your mistakes. So if I'm looking at this color and I, I'm saying, wow, that looks really, really dark. I can take that same tempura, that, that light color that's almost a skin color and just very lightly add that over the top. And suddenly now you see how much that lightened up, but it's still there. I've still got that color and it actually softened it a bit more. This is a really cool trick. If you accidentally get too much color on, you want to lighten it up. There I go. Way easier. Just simple. I don't have to wipe it all off. It lightened it up. It's a softer look now. I'm checking me over here and seeing what you're seeing. Because what I see in the mirror is a little bit different. But, yeah, so now I've got this really, it, it's natural. It doesn't look like i got a stack of, you know, eyeshadow on. So, next is, I'm done with eyeshadow. That's all I'm going to do. You can see my eyelids are still fairly light. I have a fairly decent line here. And it, it's, a, it's a fairly natural look. So I'm going to get into uh, my eyeliner next. Now, eyeliner is always a trip. Um, I use a few different ones depending on mood. Today, I'm going to use a liquid eyeliner. This is from NYX. Um, it's their vinyl liquid eyeliner. Part of the reason I like this one is I love the applicator. When I show you this brush, check this out. This is like awesome. So look at how thin that brush is. It's a nice long brush, super thin, and the reason I like that is, again, with the hooded eyes, one of the things I want to do with eyeliner is a very, a relatively thin line. I don't want big, thick eyeliner because what I don't want to do is draw too much attention to this dark area. I want to just create the illusion of more shadowing there. Bigger lashes, which is ultimately what you're trying to do with eyeliner anyway. It's to make your lashes look bigger. And that's it. I don't want to make my eyelids look huge because it's just going to get buried when I open my eyes anyway. So I do this. Is I'm actually not going to start as far in as I want it because I want to get... There's a lot of uh, liquid on here right now and I don't want that all to... Um, I don't want it to smudge too big, so I really want to bring this, I want to taper it down to a point as I get closer to the corner of my eye. So I'm going to start a little bit in from the end of my eyelashes, and all I'm going to do is take this and paint it on, and because it's liquid, it goes on super easy. You notice I don't have to stretch my eyelids at all. I'm going all the way down to the corner, and now that I've taken some off, now I can go back. And I just create that very thin pointed line. And that is why I love this brush. And 
And that's it. That's all I want to do. Now, you can still see my eyelashes look really light. That's because I haven't done mascara yet. But that's it. Just that really light, light coating there. Very thin. And I'm going to come back and do the other side essentially the same way. Now the really nice thing with this liquid is that if I do mess up and I go too high, I can always just fill it in. And you notice I open and close my eyes a little bit when I do this too. That's because the shape of, I mean everything changes in the shape of your eyelids when you're doing this when they're open versus closed. And so I want to make sure I get all the way to the corner. It's also knowing to pull the brush away if your eye starts to twitch, which my eyes like to twitch when I'm doing this. So I've gotten really good. at knowing when to pull the brush away because I can feel my eyes about to twitch and I don't want it to send eyeliner everywhere. All right, so there, that's the top eyeliner. And, you know, kind of dry it a little bit because it will smudge, but um, good to go. So the for my water lines on the bottom then, um, I use, then I use like a gel stick. And so this is Anastasia Beverly Hills, dark side. I'm totally holding it upside down so you can't read it. Um, I don't know if you can read it anyway, but... It's just, it's just a gel liner. Um, here's a trick for you too. You've probably heard people tell you don't pull your eyes, your, you know, your lower eyelid down. True, it helps develop bags. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my fingers here. I'm just placing them, I'm not pulling down, but this is just to keep my, my eyelid steady as I do this. Now, a trick with gel is that this actually kind of softens as you, it warms up on your skin. So that's why I had to go back and forth a number of times. All I did, if you can see, is I went from just before the tear duct out. And I always try to put a little bit darker to the outside. Again, you're, you're kind of creating that effect. You want more shadows to the outside of your eye. And so, you know, and again, I'm trying to enhance that lash line. And our lashes tend to be thicker over there too. So, you know, that's kind of where you get just a, a little element of, I guess, dramatics without actually, you know, but still keeping it very natural looking. There. So, that's it. That That's it for the eyeliner. Um, you know... Keeping it fairly light, not big dramatics. I'm not going to come back and do eyeshadow underneath because, again, I'm not looking for hugely dramatic eyes. I'm looking for a natural look. If I was doing more to dra dramatics, yeah, I would use some eyeshadow under there. Um, the last thing I am going to do, just because this is a little thing you can do, it, it's kind of neat. I'm going to go back to my palette here. Uh, that's not the right one. I'm going to grab the Modern Renaissance. There is a, a shimmer in here that I'm going to use really quick. You can see it's almost gone. Um, it's this Vermeer. You can tell I like that one. I'm just going to put a little bit down in the corner and I'm going to blend it out. Because what I don't want is I don't want it to be really wild. But you can see I'm going to kind of drag it along. And I actually got more on here so I'm going to end up doing the whole lid. But that's okay because with this kind of poor girl's cut crease... It helps really make a harder line there. So I got way more on here than I had anticipated. But I'm actually okay with it if I just, again, blend it out. It's always a magical thing with makeup is you can blend. And, you know, 
when you don't want a hard line, just blend it out and it goes away and everything looks soft and falls together. So there, that's all I was looking for. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side and try to get the same effect. This time, hopefully not by putting a whole bunch on there, but rather just. And when I'm, if you notice, I'm not stretching my eyes when I kind of wipe this across. Um, that's important, again, just a light touch. But you see what that did is that really brought up this area and kind of made it explode a little bit more, which, you know, again, just a little flare of dramatics, but still really natural looking. All right, eyes are done. Eyebrows are next. Now this is the thing, every time I post a picture of myself fully made up, the one thing I hear from people is they love my eyebrows. Okay, I like them too. Like I actually, I feel like they're a pretty good feature. So <clears throat> I don't do a lot. Uh, you know, definitely before I started today, I did pluck them to about the shape that I like. And you can see they don't look the same. My eyebrows don't, nobody's eyebrows grow the same. You probably heard the, the saying, you know, they should be sister or uh, sisters, not twins or cousins, not twins or whatever. I, I don't even know. But, you know, the idea being they should look similar, like they're the same family, but they shouldn't look identical. And so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw kind of the harder shapes. This is where I do get a little more dramatic, even with a natural look. Um, but all I'm going to do, I'm not going to fill it in hard. Like I don't want to make them really, really dark where they don't look natural. So I'm, I always start on the bottom. And what I'm trying to do here is just create that flat line. And I'm going to bring it up to just this apex point. So you can see kind of how I, I trim my eyebrows is to try to create that apex. And where that is is basically straight up from the corner of my eye. You can kind of see that. Um, and then I'm going to, so now I got this line pretty well done. I'm going to take it up and just kind of try to create this angle upward. And you can see I'm filling in for where I don't have a lot of brow here for some reason. So this is probably where I'll put the heaviest amount of this brow stick. And by the way, this is the brow stick from Benefit. I'll, I'll show it to you in a second. I realized I didn't tell you what I was using here. And so I just bring that straight across. Straight line here, straight line here, straight line here. Three straight lines. Bring it up to the apex, and then I'm going to come with a hard angle downward from the apex. And that's what gives it that really cool kind of, you know, point up there that I like. I, I like the way that that comes out. That's what I'm trying to do is create kind of that that you know, really strong cut on the top. The bottom, I want to kind of have it round out a little bit more, as you can see there. So I've got kind of round here, really pretty solid corner, and I'm going to make it actually even a little stronger. And then that, that gives me the look I'm going for. And that's, that's what I like. I like that style, okay? Um, you know, other people like that smoother, you know, depending on your face shape. But for my eyes especially with the stronger eye, eyebrow bones, that works really well to raise my eyes and make them look a little more open. And I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, I'm starting from you know, the inside most portion. I'm drawing the line underneath first because that, that lets me pick my size. And then I'm just going to take this angle up and I'm going to do the same thing, straight line across the top to make that really just one straight line. Fill in here where I see gaps of color. And now I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna look and I'm gonna make sure that the angles look the same. That's the one thing I do want, is I want the same angles, even if they don't look identical, I want pretty much the same angle upward there. And that varies every time I do this. I never get the same exact look here twice. Now, if I make this corner too hard, I can, Again, because I use that setting powder, I can just wipe that off really quick. And now I've got the corner I want. And so I'm just going to come to the outside apex. I've got, you know, what I want there, the hard corner at the top. Underneath, I'm going to make it a little bit more round. And I'm done. And there's my eyebrows. So <clears throat> obviously how you pluck them matters. Um, 
one trick I will show you, I learned this somewhere, I don't know where. If you take just like a any straight edge, place it against your nose, and then run it across um, the corner of your eye. That's a great way to figure out where, where you want to put the end of your eyebrow. So you want kind of that line from the end of your eyebrow through the corner of your eye, through the side tip of your nose and do that on both sides. And that's a great way when you're plucking to figure out where you want to stop so you don't go too far out and you've got two eyebrows that are really wide and look kind of weird, but you're not, <clears throat> you know, you get enough and you get the, the right shape. Um, setting spray, next thing. So I've done all the dry stuff I'm gonna do. The only thing I've left is mascara and lipstick and both of those are wet items. So, and what I found is if I do setting spray after I put on mascara, before the mascara dries, I get the little sprinkles down here from the mascara. So, um, I use Urban Decay All Nighter and just a couple quick little spritzes. Ooh, I guess it's running low. You saw that, it created a little mess. Um, that happens sometimes when it's getting low. So, Give that a minute just to dry in, and that's just gonna set everything. So a little bit of setting spray, and now I'm gonna do mascara. Mascara I tend to keep pretty light too. I only do the uppers when I, especially when I'm going for something less dramatic, more natural. I just do my upper lids. I love, love, love Benefits Roller Lash. The reason I love it is I love the applicator again. I'm all about having the right tools, so. I just, this one does really nice, it's a plastic applicator as far as all the teeth on that comb. So it works really well for like separating eyelashes. And so all I'm gonna do is, just like the name implies, I start on with this kind of crest of it against my eyelashes and as I pull it out, I just roll it. Just roll it out so that it, it kind of stretches the eyelash, if you will. And that's what actually gets you the separation so you're getting mascara on every lash, but you're also separating them so that they look straight. And I'll even come back and I'll do it the opposite angle. And what this does, it just helps me get really to the corner of my eye. And I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to make sure I really straighten them out, get mascara on every, every hair and pull it up as high as I can. And I'm kind of pressing just a little bit inwards toward my face too. Again, to kind of help raise the eyelashes. Um, you know, so that they're not, because if they, if they stick too far straight out, you know, you don't see them. And this is why, you know, women use eyelash curlers. I do from time to time. I don't use them all the time. Obviously I haven't today because honestly, just using this technique I found I can get enough curl in my lash that I really don't need to use a curler. And I always kind of worry about the curler and if that does any kind of damage to the hair, you know, you're kind of crimping it in there. I just, if I can do it without, I'd rather do it without. And I just, I, I really like this effect. Again, enough to enhance my eyelashes, but keeping it simple and keeping it natural looking. That's it, eyelashes, done. Simple, simple. Last thing, uh, lipstick. <laughs> Again, Anastasia, uh, I love their liquid lipstick. I love liquid lipstick. I also use Stila, but this is becoming hard to find. Um, <clears throat> I like the liquid because I don't need a lip liner. I can put this on, I can get a really nice hard line on my lips without any lip liner. And here too, especially if I'm going for a natural look, I want natural colors. A big bright red lipstick <clears throat> obviously isn't natural. This is more of like a natural color. So I'm gonna start on the lower lip. I'm gonna try to draw the line along the crest of my lip here as best I can. And then you'll see how I touch it up.
All right, so I got the bottom lip pretty well. And you see I smudged it already to the top. And now I'm just gonna really do that Cupid's bow. I'm fortunate I've got a really strong Cupid's bow. Um, if you don't, you, you may wanna, you know, sometimes women tend to just go straight across that or, you know, not as pronounced. For me, because I have a really strong one, I like to accentuate it. So you're gonna see I'm gonna draw in a pretty strong Cupid's bow here. And so you see, I kind of, you know, mouth open, mouth closed, look at it a few different ways to make sure that, you know, things are even. The key with the Cupid's bow is making sure you get the tops, the, the tips or the, the peak of the Cupid's bows, you know, both sides in the same height, same distance outward, and then try to get the same shape coming down. Never going to be perfect, kind of like your eyebrows, the two sides will always be different because nobody's lips are perfectly straight that way. There. And I'm going to come back one more time on my lower lip. So the line on my lower lip, I don't pay attention to where my lips actually end, like the skin. A lot of people try to look at that and it's really hard to tell. Instead, what I'm looking for is where is that as it, you know, my lips project from my face, where is that kind of peak? And that's where I want that line to fall, maybe a little under it if I really want my lips to look big and full. Um, and that's how I know that I'm going to get a good full lip without looking like a clown. And no offense to clowns, they just go for a very different effect. So there we go. Lips are done. And that's it. I'll you know quickly do the, just to take off any of the excess, just dab off there on, on my tissues and I'm done. I'm ready to go. Let my hair down, head on out, everything's good to go. So there you have it. Um, I'm gonna check, all right, so, um, what do I use to draw that line? So I'm going to look at some of your questions here. Um, I'm based on the timing of that. I'm guessing that that's, um, that was from the eyebrows. Um, if I'm wrong, let me know in the chat, but yeah, I realized I didn't show it to you. It's the benefit goof proof. Oh, I got to do that whole thing, right? Is it going to zoom? Eh, it's going to be hard to read. It's benefits goof proof. And what I like about it is that it's got a brush on one end, it's got the actual, you know, the color stick on the other. So I can come in and brush my hair and put color on all at the same time. Way easier. I mean, I've got, you know, I've got the separate brushes and all the happy stuff, but this is so much easier, and especially when I'm traveling and stuff, just throw that in there. Good to go. Um, let's see. I don't... I don't see any other questions. If I missed one, quick hit me up. Let me know if you got a question. But that's it. Um, I mean, that's if I'm doing full face, but I want to keep it more natural, um, which most of the time when I'm doing makeup, that's what I'm looking for. I don't, I'm kind of a chicken. I don't do a lot of really bold, you know, dramatic looks. I do from time to time. But honestly, this is my preference. I, I tend to just. For me, I, I think it looks better on me than when I do some of the dramatics. They don't turn out the way I typically want them to. Maybe I'm just not that good. But uh, there you have it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much. Um, my first ever makeup video, I I don't know. Maybe, I, I can't see why I would ever do another one because that's basically the look I have. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you later.